Often overlooked on the British aviation scene, the Britain Norman Aircraft Company of the Isle of Wight produced among the most commercially successful small airliners and utility planes ever to grace the skies. The crown jewel of their compact but innovative designs being the Islander series of regional turboprops, which have seen deployment to nearly every corner of the earth. The Britain Norman Company traces its roots back to the two men fundamental in its formation, John Britton and Desmond Norman, both men being apprentices with the de Havilland Company at their Hatfield Works, who had met in 1947, and decided that, rather than continuing a career with de Havilland, they would instead venture to design their own aircraft after completing their apprenticeships at the de Havilland Technical School in 1949, resulting in the formation of the Britain Norman Partnership. The first product of this partnership was assembled in Britain's garage in Bembridge on the Isle of Wight, that being an ultralight monoplane dubbed the BN1F Finneby of 1951, an aircraft developed as a hobby for the two men, as they still maintained full-time jobs in order to earn the necessary capital. Britain employed in his family's theatre business, while Desmond was an export assistant with the Society of British Aerospace Companies, or SPAC, while also continuing to fly to Havilland Vampires with 601 Count of London Squadron of the Auxiliary Air Force. The Finneby itself was based on very simple but sensible principles, and with its easy maintenance and construction, together with its low operational cost, Britain and Norman quickly considered that basing future aircraft on such underpinnings could allow for mass production aviation available to all, and thereby established Britain Norman Limited in 1953 as an agent specialising in the conversion of ex-RAF Tiger Moth trainers into agricultural aircraft such as crop dusters, although with the decline in interest of converting older aircraft models, in the face of newer, bespoke turboprop models coming on the market, the firm instead chose to improve crop spraying techniques through the development of the Micronair Rotary Atomizer of 1955, a crop spraying device which successfully replaced the somewhat inaccurate boom and nozzle style equipment of the time, and by 1958, over 500 of the Atomizer units had been sold across the world. With the profits yielded by this device, Britain Norman joined with Frank Mann and Australian aviation engineer Jim McMahon to create Crop Culture Aerial Limited, a firm which specialised in the sale of advanced crop dusting technology across the world, which in turn provided huge income for the men, and allowed for Britain and Norman to develop new forms of technology through various subsidiary firms. Initially, Britain and Norman placed their capital into a new shadow company called Cushioncraft Limited, an engineering firm which developed technology which would later form the basis of hovercrafts, the company's first model, the Cushioncraft CC1 of 1960, becoming the world's second working hovercraft after the Saunders Row SRN1 of 1959. But while the Cushion Craft venture did result in six successful prototypes, in 1966, Britain Norman, seeing no long-term future in the scheme and with losses mounting, sold off their interests to the rival British Hovercraft Corporation. As their hovercraft venture got underway during 1960, Britain Norman also put their crop dusting capital into the formation of Cameroon's Air Transport of West Africa, a domestic airline that provided flights into improvised airfields, but quickly found that they struggled to find a contemporary aircraft model that was suited to the somewhat unique nature of the company's operations. The airline's use of Piper Apache, Piper Aztec, and Dornier DO-28 models, illustrating that there was no current production aircraft that could provide the necessary load space in the cabin, thereby inspiring Britain to develop a brand new model to fill this niche alongside chief designer John Allen, later replaced by Dennis Albert Berryman. Initially, the cost of developing the airliner, dubbed the Britain Norman BN2, including the designing, prototype building, production tooling and component building, was carried entirely by the Britain Norman company itself, coming to an eventual cost of £170,000, or £3.36 million in 2021. But in 1965, on the advice of the Transport Aircraft Requirements Committee, the Ministry of Aviation recommended to the Treasury that the project, on its achievements and forward prospects, be supported by state funding culminating on November 1st, 1966, by the announcement that the Ministry of Aviation was prepared to meet up to half the launching costs and that the government would participate in the proceeds from BN2 sales. With £190,000 now loaned to the company, the project was able to flourish, including the construction of a brand new factory of 56,000 square feet at the Bembridge plant, which was opened by the end of the year, followed in February 1967 by the Minister of Aviation, John Stonehouse, announcing additional support in the form of an interest-bearing loan of £250,000, later increased to £550,000, attracting substantial orders in the BN2 project, which had now been christened the Islander. Much of the incentive behind the government support came following the first flight of the prototype BN2 on June 13, 1965, 
the aircraft being powered by a pair of Rolls-Royce Continental IO 360B piston engines and was capable of attaining a top speed of 170 miles an hour, a range of 869 miles, and a service ceiling of 11,300 feet, the uneventful maiden flight of the aircraft being followed four days later by its display at that year's Paris Air Show, where it drew significant attention. Development of the BN2 continued through 1966 with the launch of the second prototype, before eventually the first production model made its first flight on April 24, 1967, by which time orders had flooded in from commercial, military and private operators across the globe. This immediate success, meaning that within a year, the brand new factory at Bembridge had been far outstripped by customer demand, forcing Britain Norman to subcontract production out to the former Saunders Row factory at East Cowes, also on the Isle of Wight, which was now under the ownership of Westland Aircraft. Westland producing over 300 Islander airframe components before delivering them to Bembridge, whereupon final assembly and flight testing was undertaken by Britain Norman. In February 1968, under a technology transfer agreement, a contract was placed with Intrapindaria de Reparati Material Aeronautic, or IRMA, of Romania to assemble Islander kits at their factory in Bucharest before being sent back to Bembridge for final assembly, the first Romanian Islander taking flight in August 1969, while production of Romanian models took place at a rate of around 30 to 40 aircraft per year. In 1969, Britain Norman attempted to venture into new markets with the BN3 Nymph, a prototypical four-seat high-wing monoplane designed to challenge the Piper Cherokee and Cessna 172, presenting the option of either a 115, 130 or 160 horsepower Lycoming 0235 C1B air-cooled flat four engine, the plan being for final assembly of the aircraft to be undertaken by suitably qualified local organisation from kits of fully finished, interchangeable parts supplied by the manufacturer, with early discussions including the possibility that kit production could be outsourced to the Shorts Brothers Company of Belfast. But although there were an initial order of 100 units for the BN3, from the company's Australian distributor HP Hunt, a lack of cash flow prevented this plan from being implemented, and the Nymph remained a prototype only. Regardless of the Nymph's failure, Britain Norman continued to develop and improve their flagship Islander, starting with a military variant in 1970 known as the Britain Norman Defender, which differed through the use of Rolls-Royce 250 B-17F turboprops instead of the Islander's Lycoming 0540 E4C5 six-cylinder air-cooled horizontally opposed piston engines, and was built with a larger airframe with four underwing hardpoints for pylons to attach either 2,500 pounds of external fuel tanks, bombs, missiles, 7.62mm machine gun pods, rocket pods, flares, sensors, or other stores. During that same year, a further development of the Islander came in the form of a three-engine variant dubbed the BN-2A Mark III, affectionately dubbed the Trilander, this aircraft having been developed to answer the call of customers desiring an aircraft of larger size, and, aside from its third engine, differed from the regular Islander through a stretched fuselage for additional capacity and a strengthened fixed tricycle landing gear the modifications to the Trilander design having no impact on the Islander's already exceptional low-speed handling characteristics, extended endurance, increased payload, low noise signature, and economical operating costs. Like the Islander, the Trilander was also lauded upon its launch, and immediately saw sales success. But sadly, the aircraft's design and development would be one that essentially broke the company, as in order to gain funding for the Trilander, the Britain Norman firm's main bank, Lloyd's, appointed one of their company directors to oversee a bank loan that had been supplied to the company to pay off the new model's development, only for said director to suddenly demand the immediate repayment, or calling in, of this loan, at a cost that far exceeded Britain Norman's capital, leading to the firm's immediate collapse into administration in October 1971. In order to escape the crippling debt, a new firm was created called Britain Norman Bembridge Limited the following month and in August 1972, the struggling firm was bought by Ferry Engineering, with Britain and Norman remaining as directors until their departure in February 1976, while Ferry opted to slowly move Islander and Trilander production from Bembridge to their Gosliers plant in Belgium, the Bembridge facility subsequently being only used for certification flights prior to customer delivery. In 1972, Britain Norman undertook a feasibility study for a short-haul three-dart-powered passenger cargo transport known as the Mainlander, which aimed to replace existing transport aircraft such as the Fairchild C-119 and the Bristol Freighter, with prospective assembly of the aircraft to have taken place at the Gosselier plant under the ferry Britain Norman Mark, while British Air Ferries, the operator of car ferry flights across the English Channel and the Irish Sea, also provided input into the Mainlander project, 
as a possible replacement for their fleet of Carvair car-carrying airliners, but this project never went beyond the concept stage. However, despite the continued success of the Islander and Trilander products, Britain Norman continued to struggle throughout the 1970s, and on August 3, 1977, fell into receivership once again as the demand for regional airliners dropped following the 1973 oil crisis, leading to the firm being sold to Erlich & Berler, owner of Pilatus Aircraft of Switzerland, the following year, in order to create Pilatus Britain Norman. From then on, the main goal of Britain Norman was to maintain sales of the winning Islander through ongoing evolution of the design, some concepts including a 1978 proposal to fit the Islander with doughty rotol ducted fans that produce less noise than conventional propeller propulsion, but this never went beyond a single prototype. While that same year, a turboprop variant of the Islander was considered, which would fit the regular aircraft with two 320 horsepower Allison 250 B17C turboprops, as well as providing a comprehensive reworking of the cockpit and a reduction in cabin noise levels, the eventual BN2T turbine Islander entering sales in 1981. Beyond the Islander, Early concepts of the upgraded BN2T4S Defender 4000 commenced during the first half of the 1980s, although this enhanced version of the Defender, which was intended for an aerial surveillance role, wouldn't make its first flight until 1995, followed by its production launch in 1997, while the Trilander, as its demand dropped away, was removed from sales in 1981 with only 72 units built, though intentions were to allow continued Trilander assembly when Britain Norman sold the manufacturing license to the International Aviation Corporation but this ultimately came to naught. In the early 1990s, plans were made to revive the Trilander again in China through a joint venture deal with the Shenzhen General Aircraft Company, although this again failed to come to fruition, while Guernsey-based Anglo-Normandy Aero Engineering, a specialist in the maintenance of Islanders and Trilanders, intended to put unbuilt Trilander kits back into limited production, but after failing to receive any firm orders, only two unassembled Trilanders were fully constructed. In 1998, Britain Norman was sold to Litchfield Continental Limited of the British Virgin Islands, a diversified holding company with holdings in chemical, real property, maritime, mining, research and development and financial management firms, with the company once again named Britain Norman Aircraft, followed shortly thereafter by the announcement of Biofarm Inc., a US-based company from Linfield, Pennsylvania, that they had purchased 100% of the capital stock of Britain Norman Limited from Litchfield, while Britain Norman itself signed a contract in January 1999 for the acquisition of a 72.9% stake in Romero, the Romanian firm which continued to build outsourced Islander kits since the original deal had been struck 35 years earlier. But following the Romanian government's suspension of tax and customs exemptions for foreign investors during that year, Britain Norman refused to pay the purchase price of $80.5 million, and thus the state ownership fund, a major shareholder at the time, cancelled the contract and resumed Romero's privatisation process. In response, Britain Norman filed a lawsuit against the Romanian government in the International Arbitration Court, claiming breach of contract as Romania had cancelled the tax break stipulated in the contract by enforcing the state budget law for 1999, the fallout of this litigation meaning that Romero was once again re-offered for sale in 2003, to which Britain Norman purchased the firm. But during this period the company had fallen into receivership in April 2000 due to a mixture of legal fees and the fluctuating market for regional airliners. The Britain Norman firm being purchased by Alawi Zawawi Enterprises on May 4, 2000, and emerged from receivership as the BN Group. Today, the BN Group is still part of Alawi Zawawi Enterprises, and continues to maintain production of its still highly successful BN2 Islander and Defender series of twin-engined regional airliners, the Islander having sold 1,280 units over the course of its 56-year production life, and has seen deployment with airlines, governments and private owners to nearly every corner of the world. Overall, Britain Norman, despite its rocky financial history, has proven itself to be a secret shining moment for the British aviation industry throughout its long existence, succeeding through its simple universal design where other, far more complicated UK airliners like the VC-10 and the Trident had failed. And with the demand for regional aircraft on short hops and trips into remote regions with unprepared landing strips remaining steady, the BN2 Islander and its flexible, compact layout is destined to evolve to meet the needs of a new decade.